Hey guys, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm looking at Super Sharp AI. It's super and it's sharp and I love that it's AI based because AI is smarter than I am. Let's just be honest. Uh, so that comes in really handy. I like this tool. I love, love uh, having extensions because they're integrated, of course, right inside of Luminar Neo, which means it's just part of my workflow. I do want to clarify extensions are add-on products to Luminar Neo. I've had a number of comments and questions about that. You do pay extra for extensions. They're a separate add-on. They do now sell them separately or individually. So if you don't want the whole set, you don't have to buy the whole set. You can just buy one of them, two of them, whatever. There's a link down below if you want to check it out. Today we're looking at Super Sharp AI, as I said, and I'm going to show you two examples, talk a little bit about how I'm using this product. Let's take a look. Here's a photo that I've done nothing to in terms of editing, except I already applied Super Sharp AI, and the main reason is it's kind of slow. I'm going to be honest. It's not the fastest tool in the shed. It's the sharpest tool in the shed, but it's not the fastest tool in the shed, and that's okay. Um, there's a lot of thinking, I guess, that goes on, and uh, anyway, um, I went ahead and ran the tool, and I'm using Motion Blur. There are two options in this tool, Motion Blur and Universal. I'm going to use Motion Blur on this photo, and I'll use Universal on the next one. On this one, this was a handheld 50 millimeter f1.4 lower light portrait, which is really basically, for me, a recipe for kind of a soft shot. And in fact, um, it was it was kind of soft. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to her face because that is uh, obviously the focal point in a portrait. And, you know, let me show you the before. There it is. You can see it's a little bit softer around the eyes. I probably missed focus. It was f1.4, uh, 50 mil. I'm not really a portrait photographer, although I enjoy it quite a bit. And I'm going to another event soon to take some more, but it's not really my thing. Um, so I slightly missed focus, but using suit super sharp AI. As you can see, it's kind of brought it back. It's given me a little bit sharper look there in the eyes, and that's what I want, and that's how I'm using this motion blur because, you know, I was, I don't know if I was squatting, but I'm standing, and I'm not leaning on anything. No tripod. Like I said, it's handheld, so it's just a little bit soft. There it is before. It's actually better now that I've zoomed in 200, but there it is uh, before, and there it is now. You can see it did a pretty good job, really, and I think that's uh, that's worked out pretty well. And when I back up, it just looks a lot better. Now, let me zoom back in. Uh, I'm going to go to 100. There is one thing that you may notice with Super Sharp, and that is sometimes other patterns, like in the background, get sharpened or might look a little bit wonky, for lack of a better word. So if you look at the board above her head, um, like right up in here, if you look at that before, and after, you can see it moved a little bit and got a little bit clear. I don't really care about that. And so what I find myself doing is going into masking, and I'll just get a brush, and I'm going to paint, and I'm going to go full strength, and I'll just paint this adjustment in to the eyes, right? That's mostly what I care about. You may notice also some of her hair got sharpened. I don't really care about any of that. So I just really want this portion of her face to be sharp and crisp. And that's the beauty of having the masking tool built right into Super Sharp AI is you just go paint that in. And so other stuff that's in the background, they get sharpened like patterns in the wood fence. Hey, they're gone. That's not sharpened because I didn't mask it in. I only masked it in to her face. And so there it is before and there it is now. And let me zoom in. It looks better when you can see it a little closer. There it is uh, with the uh, with the low. By the way, let me go back to the adjustments on motion blur. I used low. But there it is before, a little bit softer, probably slightly missed focus because of the motion blur, me standing still, or as still as I could stand, and handheld, uh, and really narrow uh, field, a uh, focal plane, right, because of the uh, 1.4. Uh, but there it is after, so before and after, definitely an improvement, and that's one thing that I'm really liking about this tool. Now, the other way I'm using it, of course, is the universal setting, and in this case, I've edited this photo pretty significantly. It's a raw file and it started like that, very dark, and I went and made a number of adjustments and got it to look like that. And you can see the different adjustments here. Develop, a super contrast, color harmony, enhance AI. Actually, it's not a raw file. My apologies. Um, I thought it was. Anyway, um, I used super sharp AI. And in this case, I used the universal setting and I used low. And by the way, I used low on the other one too. I'm finding it's a little too much for my taste when I use middle or high. Uh, regardless of whether I'm using Motion blur, blur or Universal. 
I just like low setting, but it gives me a nice little crispiness, which I love. What I want to do is zoom in, and I actually don't really care a whole lot for how it looks on her face. It looks a little overdone. Let me show you. There it is before. She's definitely a little bit softer, and there it is now. So backed out again, it actually looks fine. And to be clear, you're probably not going to be zooming in or blowing it up that much. But I'm going to go back into 200. But what I really like about Universal in this case is where it says telephone on all these telephone booths in London, of course. And uh, if you look at the before, actually, let me go to 300. Whoops, that would be better. So you can see this even closer. But if you look at all this, uh, the script, the, the text, if you will, where it says telephone, it looks nice and crisp. And I love that. There it is before, a little bit softer. And there it is now a little bit sharper. And in fact, let's see, 300, let's try 600. Uh, I don't want to over zoom, but hey, you know what? It's gonna gonna help you see this. So if you look at the before, this actually is a really good uh, indication of it. If you look at all that script before, pretty soft overall, and now quite a bit sharper overall. And so on a photo like this, I may or may not mask it. Like I don't care a whole lot about things in the background being super sharp. I hate to use that uh, description because that's the name of the tool, but I don't really need a lot of things to be super sharp in the uh, in the photo but i definitely like the phone boost and, and all the script and that sort of thing like i don't really care about like maybe the the uh, the cement sidewalk all that so you could mask it in same kind of thing just use a brush uh, or in this case um, if i'm mostly uh, concerned about kind of the foreground and that sort of thing i might just do something about like this and just go like that and in fact actually i think that is what i would probably do simply because it's going to be quicker anyway and now all my masking, or excuse me, all my sharpening is going into that uh, area that I uh, did with the uh, with the gradient that you could see there. So once again, I will zoom in. Let's go to 600 because that was pretty uh, pretty good indication of how this looks. Also, like the crown up here and all that looks better. So there it is before. You can see the crown a little bit softer, and all the telephone uh, where it says telephone on all these booths a bit softer, and now. A little bit sharper, a little bit crisper, a little bit clearer. So again, before, a bit softer, and after, a bit sharper. That's Super Sharp AI. Again, two modes in the most recent update to Luminar. I think it's working great. I'm really enjoying having this. Although, like I said, I'm generally using it just on low on either Universal or Motion Blur. But it's working great for me. It's a nice add-on to have. That's a quick kind of look. Maybe not that quick. But that's a look at Super Sharp AI and how I'm using it. Hope it gives you some ideas for your own photos. I'll be back really soon covering my lengthy list of things that I'm working on for you guys. It's all coming soon. Hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks for watching, stopping by, hanging out, all that stuff. I appreciate it. I'll be back really soon. I'll see you guys then. And until then, take care and adios.